Hello, and welcome to week 36 of the Literary Lutheran Reads of Book of Concord. This episode is for Monday, and today we are picking up where we left off at the end of last week in Article 3, The Righteousness of Faith Before God. Here we go with the antitheses or negative statements. Antitheses or negative statements. Contrary teaching rejected. We reject and condemn all the following errors. 1. Christ is our righteousness according to his divine nature alone. Number 2. Christ is our righteousness according to his human nature alone. 3. Where the righteousness of faith is spoken of in the sayings of the prophets and apostles, the words just, justify and to be justified are not to mean declaring or being declared free from sins and obtaining the forgiveness of sins but they actually mean being made righteous before God because of love infused by the Holy Spirit, virtues, and the works following them. 4. Faith not only looks to Christ's obedience, but also to his divine nature, since it dwells and works in us, and by this indwelling our sins are covered. 5. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, 5. Faith is a sort of trust in Christ's obedience that can exist and remain in a person even when he has no genuine repentance in whom also no love follows, but who persists in sins against his conscience. 6. Not God himself, but only God's gifts dwell in believers. 7. Faith saves on this account, because the renewal by faith is begun in us, which dwells in love for God and one's neighbor. 8. Faith has the first place in justification, yet renewal and love also belong to our righteousness before God in a particular way. Although renewal and love are not the chief cause of our righteousness, nevertheless our righteousness before God is not entire or perfect without such love and renewal. 9. Believers are justified before God and saved jointly by Christ's righteousness and credited to them and by the new obedience begun in them. Or, believers are justified in part by the credit of Christ's righteousness, but in part also by the new obedience begun in them. 10. The promise of grace is made our own through faith in the heart, by the confession made with the mouth, and by other virtues. 11. Faith does not justify without good works, so that good works are necessarily required for righteousness, and without their presence a person cannot be justified. Article 4. Good Works. Note, it is wrong to say that good works are necessary for salvation. It is also wrong to say that they are harmful for, for salvation. Just as wrong, however, is to avoid the discussion of good works altogether. Perhaps the best analogy for good works, and a biblical one at that, is to think of them as fruit on a tree, as seen in Matthew chapter 7, verse 17. A living tree bears fruit. A dead tree bears no fruit. A person who is alive through faith in Christ will do good works. On the other hand, a person who is spiritually dead, that is, without faith in Christ, may perform certain outward actions, but they are not good works. While good works play no role in our salvation, they are very much part of our lives as God's children. Good works in the Christian life do not result from our fearing God's punishment. Rather, they result from God loving us. God's perfect love in Christ drives out all fear and replaces it with a heart, soul, and mind that love him and serve our neighbor. Status of the Controversy The Chief Question in the Controversy about Good Works Concerning the, the doctrine of good works, two divisions have arisen in some churches. 1. First, the theologians have become divided because of the following expressions. One side wrote, Good works are necessary for salvation. It is impossible to be saved without good works. They also wrote, No one has ever been saved without good works. But the other side, on the contrary, wrote, Good works are harmful to salvation. 2. Afterward, a schism arose between some theologians because of the two words necessary and free. The one side argued that the word necessary should not be used about the new obedience, which, they say, does not flow from necessity and coercion, but from a voluntary spirit. The other side insisted on the word necessary. They say obedience is not our option, but regenerate people are obliged to render this obedience. From this dispute about the terms, a controversy arose afterward about the subject itself. 
For the one side contended that among Christians a law should not be presented at all, but people should be encouraged to do good works from the Holy Gospel alone. The other side contradicted this. Affirmative Statements The Pure Teachings of the Christian Churches About This Controversy 5. For the thorough statement and decision of this controversy, our doctrine, faith, and confession is as follows. 6. 1. Good works certainly and without doubt follow true faith. If it is not a dead but a living faith, just as fruit grows on a good tree. Matthew chapter 7 verse 17. 2. We believe, teach, and confess that good works should be entirely excluded from the question about salvation, just as they are excluded from the article of justification before God. The apostle testifies with clear words when he writes as follows. Just as David also speaks of the blessing of the one to whom God counts righteousness apart from works, blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. Romans chapter 4 verses 6 through 8. And again, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9. 3. We also believe, teach, and confess that all people, but especially those who are born again and renewed by the Holy Spirit, are obligated to do good works. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. 4. In this sense, the words necessary, shall, and must are used correctly and in the Christian way to describe the regenerate, and are in no way contrary to the form of sound words and speech. 5. Nevertheless, if the words mentioned for example, necessity and necessary are used when talking about regenerate people, then only due obedience, not coercion, is to be understood. For the truly believing, so far as they are regenerate, do not offer obedience from coercion or the driving of the law, but from a voluntary spirit. For they are no more under the law, but under grace. Romans chapter 6, verse 14, chapter 7, verse 6, and chapter 8, verse 14. 6. We also believe, teach, and confess that when it is said, the regenerate do good works from a free spirit, this is not to be understood as though or an option for the regenerate person to do or not to do good when he wants, as though a person can still retain faith if he intentionally perseveres in sins. 1 John chapter 2, verses 5-9. through 9. 7. This is not to be understood in any other way than as the Lord Christ and his apostles themselves declare. In other words, the free spirit does not obey from fear of punishment, like a servant, but from love of righteousness, like children. Romans chapter 8, verse 15. 8. However, this willingness, liberty of spirit, in God's elect children is not perfect. It is burdened with great weakness, as St. Paul complains about himself in Romans chapter 7, verses 14 through 25, and Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. 9. Nevertheless, for the sake of the Lord Christ, the Lord does not charge his weakness to his elect as it is written. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. 10. We believe, teach, and confess also that works do not maintain faith and salvation in us, but God's Spirit alone does this, through faith. Good works are evidence of his presence and indwelling. Romans chapter 8 verse 5 and verse 14. This has been the Literary Lutheran Reads a Book of Concord, and I wish you a blessed day.